Last week, I was at a gathering of an improv company I created with some friends 30 years ago and still exists today. We, on, during the weekend, we shared uh, laugh, anecdotes, on some Saturdays, some of us stuck up to two in the morning. And through all our conversation, we were stupefied by the audacity of our group of 16 years old who knocked down obstacles on our path and drove these dreams of ours across the province of Quebec and, and eventually even in Europe. We also shared how these years shaped us and led us where we are now. Of course, some were surprised to learn that I became a, an ordained minister, like a real serious minister. But then they figured out that uh, writing every week a 15-minute reflection, an original one, and to deliver it in front of an audience kind of makes sense. Among those present were, was also, there was also René who told us about our interior decoration business and, some, and how some of our clients who are among the wealthiest in Canada are completely neurotic, disconnected from reality and afraid to lose everything. There was also my friend Martin who lost his mother last November and who shared with us his struggle with his brothers regarding, regarding the succession, how it has been weeks since the last time they talked to him, how he's working almost day and night to avoid thinking about it. And with all those stories in my mind, I came back on Monday to work, and to work specifically on today's uh, text from the Gospel according to Luke, the parable of the rich fool. And I said to myself, well, I guess the book of Ecclesiastes was right. There's nothing new under the sun. Because our passage begin with Jesus being approached by someone in the crowd who says, teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. And of course, Jesus could have easily quotes some Jewish text explaining how to handle the issue. But instead, he replies by telling this parable about the rich man who owns a farm that produced an abundant, an abandoned harvest. And he wonder where he will store this crop because his barns are too small. So the man decides to build bigger ones and then he will be able to enjoy his good fortune. He will say, soul, you have ample goods to lay, goods lay up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But unfortunately for this man, God shows up and tells him, this very night, your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? Hmm. Traditionally in our churches, the morale of the story is to beware of greed, because it's the root and the source of all evil. And we often say to the people in our pew, don't spend your life accumulated wealth because you will not be able to take it with you in the afterlife. In fact, we might even tell this old joke about this, this man who, want, who, who, who told his wife he wanted to be buried with all his money. And when the moment came, when it was time to put his body in the ground, well, the wife writes a check, throw it in the grave, and say, here, dear, here's your money. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't be greedy. Don't hoard your money. Instead, being humble. Be generous. In fact, give all your money. That's always the best. Give your money to the church 
or even your minister. We have heard that one often, eh? No, we know. We know that money does not buy love. And experience taught us that the abundance of possession does not necessarily bring happiness. Sometimes it's the complete opposite. And as I'm stating this simple and eternal truth, I'm convinced that most of you agree with me and maybe nod your head in assent. Maybe there are some names that pop in your head that totally its the perfect example of this. And yet, once we walk out the doors of our churches, it seems that all of us, all of us, feel this urge to sing a different tune. We feel this compulsion to run after success and, and profit. Sometimes we're not even aware we're doing it. Sometimes we cannot help it. It's stronger than us. Sometimes we just go along with the rest of our society. Because we live in a world where the value of an individual is measured in dollars and cents. We live in a world where material possession represent security, power, status, self-esteem. So we work, oh yes, we work very hard to the point that we barely see our children or our grandchildren, to the point we have a heart attack, to the point we install security systems and transform our houses into fortress because we're afraid to lose it all. And the worst part of this, the worst part, is that usually, regardless of how much we make, it's never enough. Let's say our income is $20,000 a year. Well, we probably would probably think that we would be happy only if we could make $30,000. But those who are making 30000 a year could also think that would be happier if only they make 50000 Even people who are making 100000 a year may think that maybe with another 100000 it would be better. And so on and so on and so on. On some days we fantasize about receiving a windfall of money and how it makes us would make us feel um, relief and secure. I'm wondering how many of us have bought lottery tickets, hoping to win all or only part of the jackpot. We do that, even if deep down we know, we know it would not free us from our worries. And yet we give in, we give in, we just give in to the seductive promise of a, a good life. We come to believe that the latest gadget, a flashier car or bigger barns would make us happier. We constantly look for another golden calf out there that we imagine will make our lives complete. I'm not trying to tell you that money is evil and we should be ashamed if we have some investment, if we have set some money aside for a retirement. No, rather the question raised by today's parable if, is, is what if? What if today would be the last, days, last day of our lives? What would we see if we look back at all that we have done up to this point. Would we be proud of ourselves or somehow feel embarrassed? If we cal calculate on what we spend our time or energy during our lifetime, what would be the end result? How much time have we spent nursing old grudges fighting with our loved ones, being anxious about the performance of the markets or afraid 
that we, we might lose it all? Would we be able to recognize moments when we use our gifts and resource to help others to achieve their dreams and accomplish small deeds that add an impact on the lives of individuals or share our joy and good fortunes with the people we love? Would we see the story of someone who has been worried all the time or able to enjoy the fruits of our abundance? Because we all know, ultimately, money comes and goes. What really stays with us is our values, our beliefs, our ideals. And yes, it's wise to set aside some money for rainy days. And we need to have dreams, projects, goals, objectives about the future but not to the point to be paralyzed today about them, from them. We need to learn to look forward without being afraid of all the possible outcomes we might imagine, because we cannot control the future. We can only control what is the here, the now. This is where we live. This is where we can have an impact. This is where we can make a difference. Worrying about tomorrow might, won't bring any real change, won't bring anything, except making us more miserable, maybe. One of the biggest disappointments people usually have is not how much more hours they could have spent at the office, but the opportunities not cease. The words we regret not saying when it was the time. The affection we haven't given to our loved ones when they were still with us. And we are invited this morning to live our lives as fully as we could. When we think about this, we are invited to pursue what really matters for us, what makes our existence meaningful, without being distracted by the worries we often create for ourselves. So today's parable from the Gospel according to Luke confronts us with simple but challenging questions. What is a worthwhile life? And how do we define a meaningful existence? What makes us rich and full? Do we really want to spend our time, our lives, fighting with family members over inheritance? Is making money the sole dri driven factor in our lives? Why we do worry so much? In face of all those questions, maybe this morning we are called to unlearn what we have learned. Unlearn to put the price tag on everything, to store up resources just in case it might be useful in the future, and starting to live this day to its fullest. Maybe we are called to invest in what truly makes us alive like sharing our resources, playing with children and grandchildren, helping a neighbor, or staying up and talking with old friends. Amen.